In this video, I'll show you how you can create your own NFTs in just 10 lines of code. If you haven't seen my previous video on the ERC721 token standard and what NFTs are, I recommend checking that video out first because I won't go over those concepts again in this video. In the next steps, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code and Hardhat, but you could also do this in the Remix Online IDE. The reason we can create our smart contract in just 10 lines of code is because we're using the Open Zeppelin ERC721 implementation. Open Zeppelin has a bunch of useful libraries that we can use to implement our own contracts, including NFTs. This file contains the implementation of EIP721, the NFT token standard. You can see the contract already includes variables like the name and the symbol for NFTs. This file includes status structures such as mappings to keep track of who owns what tokens and which owners have given approval for which tokens. By simply having our NFT contract inherit from the Open Zeppelin implementation, we get to reuse all of that functionality for free without having to rewrite it ourselves. In the first two lines of the contract, I'm using the counters library, which is also from Open Zeppelin. The counters library provides a counter that can be incremented or decremented. Each time that I generate a new token, I'm going to increment the counter. That way the token IDs will be generated in increasing order, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In the constructor, I'm simply saying that the name of the contract is simple NFTs and the symbol is simple NFT. The mint NFT function is how we're going to create the NFTs. This function is public, which means that anyone will be able to call this method and create NFTs. This method will take as input the address of the recipient that will be receiving the newly minted NFT. To create the NFT, we're first going to increment our counter, and then we're going to say that the token ID is equal to the current value of the counter. Then we're going to call the mint method, which is already implemented by Open Zeppelin, and we're going to pass it the recipient who is going to receive the NFT and the new token ID. And then we're going to return that token ID. So let's deploy this contract and test it out. After running the commands to compile the smart contract and deploy it onto the Rinkby testnet, I'm now also going to run a hardhat command to verify the contract on Etherscan so that we can interact with the UI on Etherscan. So now our NFT smart contract is deployed on Etherscan. In the contract tab, we can see the code that we saw earlier. Now let's use the UI to mint some NFTs. Now that I'm connected to Web3, I can mint an NFT to myself. So I'll pass in my own address. After about a minute, we see the transaction has been picked up by the miners and confirmed. I can go to the read contract tab to query the NFT smart contract to verify that that NFT is in my possession. In balance of, if I enter my own address and query, I can see that my balance is now one because I possess one NFT. In owner of, I can also enter the token ID, which is one, and also query the owner. And I can see that the owner is my own address. So technically we have created an NFT in just 10 lines of code, but it's a pretty boring NFT because it doesn't have any photos or properties associated with it. We can fix this by adding some metadata to our NFTs. For this next step, I'm going to use the URI storage interface. The URI storage interface allows me to add a token URI for each token ID, and that token URI will be stored directly on the blockchain. Now I need to pass in the URI when I'm creating the NFT. Therefore, I'm going to add a new argument to my mint NFT method that will take in a string which represents the token URI. After minting the token, I'm now going to associate that metadata with this token ID. This set token URI method is provided by Open Zeppelin, and it's taking in the token ID and the token URI. Internally, Open Zeppelin has a mapping from each token ID to a token URI. So this line here is going to associate this token ID with that token URI that I just passed in. In our new updated contract, we now see that the mint NFT method accepts a token URI argument. So where is this token URI going to come from? OpenSea has a page on their metadata standards, which describes what kinds of metadata will be accepted by their platform. In this example of this jellyfish, we can see that the metadata includes items such as name, description, external link, and traits. The full definition of what OpenSea accepts is listed here. We have things such as image, image data, external URL, description, and name. In a previous video, I already created Pokemon NFTs. For each Pokemon, I stored the metadata for that Pokemon on IPFS and then created a URL which is listed here. To keep things simple, for this video, I'm just going to reuse that same IPFS URL. We can open up this URL to see what the metadata looks like. For example, we see that the name of this item is Blockchain Ball Bulbasaur and that it has a description. It also has attributes such as a type, HP, attack, defense, and speed. And it also has an image pointing to this URL here. If we navigate to that image URL, we can see the photo for that NFT. 
So I'm going to copy this URL, and then I'm going to paste that URL here so that we can use it to mint a new NFT. Now in OpenSea, we can see that new NFT has been minted. It contains the metadata, such as the name of the NFT, which is Blockchain by Bulbasaur. These other Pokemon NFTs were created from my previous video on creating NFTs, so you can ignore those because they're in a different contract. Going back to the Read Contract tab, we can again verify that I own the NFT. If I type in my address, the balance is 1. In the token URI method, I can see the token URI for that token. If you have any questions about the code, please let me know in the comments below. I know I skipped over a lot of the details in this video, especially the process of how I created the metadata for the token. I cover those steps in more details in other videos, which I'll link at the end here. If you learned something, please give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.